I hope I got it right for her. This is what it looks like installed. And I added these charms for a custom touch. Now Mary's actually ran 17 marathons, which is super impressive and 17 more than I will ever run. Through the magic of YouTube, I've made a new friend. This is Mary, and she asked about adding heel straps to her sandals to help keep them on her feet. She saw this video I posted about a year ago where I added heel straps to my sandals. She asked if she could buy a pair, but I told her I would just send them as a gift. Here's the process. So here's the original strap, and it is about half an inch wide, 0.55 is what we'll do. And when I stack it up, it's also about 0.2. So let's make ourselves a little button. First, we're gonna create a circle that is 0.5 wide. Use the polygon tool. We want that diameter to be 0.2. We're gonna divide that by two. There we go. And it's gonna be four sides. Perfect. Now I'll upload this design to the cutting software. All right, now we're gonna take off our clamps here and see what we got. Well, that sure looks pretty, huh? Holy cow, that was really on there. Oh dear. I got that center square too small, so I had to cut it again, but now we are ready to grind off the tabs. And just to be extra nice, I also cut her these winged sandals. Next, we're gonna take all our pieces and we're gonna throw them in this little tumbling jar here. And the rocks are gonna tumble around and soften all the edges. Here's the one I've been polishing, you can see we're making some progress compared to the other one, which is still kind of dull. What I'm doing here is creating a reference silhouette so I know exactly where to place the sandals that I just put out of metal. I just wipe these off with alcohol, they need to be nice and clean. Just make sure everything matches up. Yep, looks good. Now I need to coat it with some laser marking spray. My laser isn't strong enough, so I'm using this stuff. Once it dries, then we can go on with the engraving process. I have four sections of paracord here, and I'm gonna gut them out. These sections are about uh, maybe four feet long. Okay, I'm gonna take two of those strands so that I fold it in half and end up with four down below. I'll place that on a point that I can braid around. And now what I'm gonna do is separate the two strands on either side, and I'm just going to twist to the left, and then this strand on the left is gonna go over the top of the right. Okay, again, twist, and then this strand on the left goes over the top of the right. 
and you can see that I'm starting to get my braid there. Twist over the top, twist over the top, and I'll just keep going. Oh, it looks like I slipped off there. Okay. Now the issue is, as I twist my braids, I'm twisting the plating of the paracord, and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to start over, now that you know the pattern, and show you how to do it. Okay, instead of taking my cord and twisting it, I'm just going to take the strands and lay them over the top and over the top, okay? And as I do it, I'll just pull in the tension and make sure that it's nice and flat. And so to help make it a consistent flat braid, I'll take my Marlin spike and I'll just iron out the cord there. There we go. That feels a lot better. And I'm counting from the top. One, two, three, four, five. I have 36 if I go all the way down. All right, next I'm going to trim this down with a fresh sharp razor blade. I'm just going to leave about, I don't know, eighth of an inch. While I was editing this, I realized that I didn't get footage of me threading that button on to the paracord. Well, it wasn't too difficult. I just did one strand at a time and I was able to slide it on through. So you can see the fuse spilled over into the button here. I don't like that. So I'm going to pull the button down just a little bit. There we go. And then I'm going to melt it again so that it's a nice looking bead. And because this hole I cut is just right for the paracord, this button is not gonna slip out. And then to install this, I'll run it through one of the straps, pass it through the buttonhole there. There we go, tighten it up, make sure it's nice and dressed. The other side, we're gonna go on the outside and then come out, I'll open up what are my holes here to adjust the tightness of the strap? And there we go. All right, so now we'll slip off our sandal. We'll take our other one. And now we can just slip it over the back of our foot. Here we have the end of our pink and purple strap and we need to attach this flying sandal here. The only issue is I'm definitely not gonna get these four strands through this small hole here. So I'll hold on to the two in the center. And then this one here, I'm going to take this strap, or cord rather, and I'm just going to run it right through. Okay, pull that back tight. Okay, now this one on this side, I'm going to flip it over. And this one is going to run through this one right here. So I'll pull this one up. Run it through. There we go, now I need to pull. Make sure all the plating is sitting nice and flat. Okay, it's difficult to see because of the pattern, but we have the same thing going on on both the front and back. And now what I'll do is I'll run it through one more time. I'm going to take this one here and I'm going to run it underneath this side here. Open it up with my Marlin spike. Run it right through. Same thing on the other side. Now we just need to connect these two, so I'll poke a hole in the middle. And then run this one through. There we go. And I'll clamp these down right here, down below. Give myself some extra room. Okay, now that I have that fused together, now I just have these two strands that I can use to thread the little charm on. So the secret to getting both of the paracord strands through this smaller hole is to cut it at a steep angle. 
There we go. And then I'll use my torch just very quickly and pinch it off. Just barely any time at all. Run this one through. There we go. We'll grab them both and pull it. There we go, I think I got it. There it is. And then we just have to trim this side and seal it off like the other. All right, let's put these together. Start with our right hand sandal. Go from the outside and the back. Open up our little loop here and then thread our charm right through. Now what we're going to do is go around the front and then come around. Now these are mirror image of each other, so I want to make sure that I have the correct sandal on the right shoe. This one's facing forward, just like we want it. Open it up, slip it through. There we go. All right. And if she wants it a little more snug, then she can just move it farther down. There we go. I think that's pretty cool, actually. Mary, I hope you like it. All right, folks, I convinced her to come out here, but she's a little bit shy because she only has her big toe painted. <laughs> Please make a comment. All right, is that okay or is it uh, a little loose? It's a little bit loose. We're gonna tighten that up. So the idea is when Mary sits down and crosses her legs, her sandal won't fall off her foot. Now that's not Mary, that's my wife. And here's the black set and the white set. I hope between the three, they work out.